K Talks. Broadcasting live from deep within the borders of occupied liberal territory known as California, Luca Zana with love, guns, and freedom. All systems go. Don't dread on us. We're not afraid. You work for us. We're not your slaves. Don't dread on us. Hello everybody, this is Gianluca Zane, you're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom on K-Talks, 1340 AM. As you already know, I'm an Italian by birth, but an American by choice. And more important, right now, I am an Arizonan by gift of God. I'm very thankful to that. I'm not here to entertain, you know, there are a lot of better people than me doing that, and I'm not really that funny also. But my goal is to engage each other in the search for the truth, with a final goal to regaining our lost liberties and taking America back, starting with our local government. When I became an American, I took an oath, and the oath was very simple, to defend this republic and this constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Even though I'm a registered Republican, I never pledge allegiance to any party, man, woman, but to America, and as an ideal of liberty and justice. I believe in life, I believe in liberty, and in the pursuit of happiness. I also believe that all human beings are unique and different from each other, but each other of us have the same inalienable rights, and we all should be treated with equal respect. I believe the government is not my God, therefore government does not own my body or my soul. It is not about left or right, not about Republicans or Democrats, it's about right or wrong, liberty or tyranny, truth or deception. I'm against all forms of collectivism. I believe in the potential of the individual. And yes, I also believe that one person can make a difference, no matter the odds. That's why I'm here. I'm trying my best to do my part. And thanks to your help, I try to do better than I can. Uh, thank you for listening to Love, Guns and Freedom. And today we have a very special guest. Probably already many of you heard the big news. We have a city councilman from Bullhead. I per a person that I really would like to know better because when I bring people here, guests, I have two type of uh, criteria. First of all, people that I respect because I believe that we have at least the most important common uh, principle of freedom uh, that we agree. But I don't want always people that we agree. I also want to have people that I would like to know better, people that I would like to know where they're coming from because we have here a potential as a new uh, Arizona state representative coming to us and is running for Arizona State House and we will talk to him in a few minutes before we, his name is Sam Medrano that also is a Bullet City Council member so I'm very proud and thank you again to Mr. Medrano to be here today with us okay is he listening to me you can say something Sam hi <laughs> hi Luca thank you he's here <laughs> with us okay before we go there because we're going to have the all hour with him about him and my goal is to know more about him and uh, this is not a debate, this is like a conversation. To know each other, but more important, to know Mr. Medrano, because he may become our next state representative. So we would like to give uh, the opportunity to the listeners to know his position about different topics, all concern what, you know, one day he may vote in the House. So that's going to be the show. Before we go there, though, I need to address a couple of uh, situations here. In the past few shows, I heard that somebody in um, some corridor noises thinks about me that I'm kind of a kiss butt. Okay, let me tell you something. Everybody that knows me a little bit, he knows that whenever, whatever I say something, I mean it. I have no agendas, I'm not running for any office, I don't get paid by anybody, and when I bring a politician here or somebody that uh, has an activism, oh, I don't care if you're a politician or not, 
and I praise them, I really mean it. Because I may not agree with everything, but in the things that you are bringing and uh, showing that you've been doing right, according to my beliefs, I really respect you for that. So in the past, for example, I really was very excited and proud to have Senator Ward that uh, she not only I think she's, she fulfilled her oath to their constituents, she's been voting always right, or at least on almost every topic's right. And I don't mean right means because we have the absolute truth. The point is when you're elected as official, you run for an agenda or you run with a platform and for some principles, and then you stick to those principles, I think that's what makes you integrity. Because if you run for something I don't believe, that's fine. But at least you stick to your principle, and I think I respect that. So I'm really happy, for example, with our former guest, you know, like uh, also uh, Arizona State Representative Sonny Borelli. He's been doing an excellent job. So I also would like to remind to the listeners, they have another side. I mean, let's not forget, I'm the first one, I was the first one uh, of the Republican Party, as uh, also I'm Republican, to go in front of Senator McCain and try to expose his body records for what he did when everybody thought I was crazy. I was the first one to try to uh, denounce the county supervisors about, at the time, 2009. Uh, in my opinion, they are lawful uh, act to deny me the, the First Amendment, and I sued the whole freaking county at the time uh, because I believe that my First Amendment was violated. So I never kiss anybody else. I just, uh, honestly, I praise when people I believe they're doing the right thing, I'm the best friends, and that's true. At the same time, you know, I speak up my mind when I believe that maybe it's uh, the opposite. So, that's just to remind. And now, talking about good things, good deeds. Senator Ward, this week she made uh, national news. Are you familiar about with that, um, mm -hmm. Sam? Yes, I am. So, you know about NSA? I do. Excellent. You would like to maybe share this news with me? You're good at that. <laughs> Come on. Well, she's introduced a bill that basically uh, makes it impossible for the NSA to do their eavesdropping and other um, probing, if you will. Yeah, I mean, impossible. You know, nothing is impossible to the almighty gods of the NSA. You know, they, <laughs> But what she's trying to do, and I respect that, she's trying to say in, their, in her bill, I mean, she's sponsoring this bill, it's still not there yet officially, that NSA, if, if they want to come to, uh, let's say, spy or surveil citizen, I mean, residents, even we are not citizens, but of Arizona, local residents, they must have probable cause according to the Constitution, mm -hmm. and they need to have a judge with a warrant, and they cannot just play gods like they can start to spy, spy mm -hmm. like, for example, a few years ago I used to say that to people, they used to laugh at me, now this week has been public domain in mainstream news that FBI have uh, that power to open, turn your camera on, and, uh, or your webcam mm -hmm. and start to listen and watch you and without warrant just because they can. You know that, that is certainly true. You know, so I respect that what Ward is doing and especially for people that say, oh, it's just going to be a waste of tax dollar or just going to be a voice into the uh, wilderness. I said, respect the courage because I think leadership is when you do something when you don't have anybody yet behind you, you know? I think the more important thing about that is I think... I think if you think about it for a bit, it's probably more of a travesty that she even has to introduce that bill. That mm -hmm. is something that should already have been followed through the Constitution, but she felt the need to put a bill in to basically right the ship and reestablish the Constitution as the rule of law as it should be. Exactly. And top, you know, I think what she's doing, she's doing a moral stand that shows that uh, we have, uh, we are into the right. I mean, we the people represented by our elected officials, we remind to the federal government that. We are, in the, we are lawful. We are trying to just uh, uh, enforce our rights, our Bill of Rights mm -hmm. is there. So if somebody is violating the Bill of Rights, it's them. You know now that in the latest uh, few years, not just today with Obama, you know, even before with Bush, you know, unfortunately we've been having many several reports, official reports from Homeland Security that uh, under the voice of domestic terrorists, we're talking about Christians. They have vet, returning veterans. They have people anyway that they believe in freedom or they believe in, um, you know, smaller government or smaller taxation. I mean, Tea Party members, they've been, uh, you know, outed by the IRS mm -hmm. just because for political. So we are under this type of uh, 
perilous times. You're aware of that. Absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. So I, I really want to respect and thank again Senator Ward for, first of all, the leadership to do the right thing. And I'm very proud that she was on our show just a couple of weeks ago. And I pray now that other legislators that will support her, and more important, you listeners, you can do something, call your legislator and try to say, we need to support this bill. We need to show to the federal government that we are not their slaves. Anyway, now let's come to my guest. And I really, th I know, I say sometimes too many times, thank you, thank you, thank you again, <laughs> Sam. You know, because I mean it, I know that... Uh, well, thanks you know, for having me. No, thank you, because the point <clears throat> is this one. You know, I'm from Golden Valley. I had this great opportunity here to have a forum, and, you know, and I'm not into the local politics. I'm here just to a mission. The mission is to bring people together to get the best out of each other, learn from each other, and trying to get our local government, state government, hopefully federal government, back to the people. That's my only goal. So I really thank you because I know that you are a, a pretty much a political uh, figure in the, in the local area of Bullhead, very prominent, and you had your own little difference of opinion with some people around here, but Absolutely. you came here for me and I appreciate that. Let's start with the question. Okay. S straight to that. First of all, tell me about you. Who is Sam Medrano? Sam Madrano. Well, Sam Madrano was uh, a, a born and raised in Arizona. I'm the only member of the Bullhead City Council who was born and raised in Arizona. It's uh, uh, If there's anybody that's noticed the difference in Arizona over the last 43 years, you can say it, it would be me, and it's been quite a change. Uh, I love Arizona. I would uh, right now don't think of living anywhere other than Arizona. Um, outside of uh, a couple of a uh, couple of years in Laughlin, when I lived in the, in Laughlin, when I first moved to the area, um, I have always lived in Arizona. I've always called it home, and uh, I will uh, uh, continue to make it home. I have five children, uh, ages 25 to 17, and yes, in just about four months, all of my kids will officially have been totally grown. Um, I do work at. Uh, uh, the TV station in Laughlin, KLBC TV2 in Laughlin, and I have off and on since 1992 uh, worked there. Um, I've also worked as a uh, district manager for the Domino's Pizza franchise on two different occasions, most recently uh, reopening all the Domino's Pizza stores up and down the Colorado River from Parker to Kingman um, two years ago uh, with a new franchisee. We did that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, was elected to the city council in 2003, re-elected in 2007 and 11. So you're still now a city councilman? I've right? been a city councilman for the last 10 years. Should I call you, uh, how do you call a city councilman? Councilman? Councilman. Let me <laughs> call you councilman. Good. Let me do that. You okay? can just call me Sam. No, I'll no, be no, okay no, no. with that. Come on, councilman. <laughs> let's do some sort. I always like to call, you know, officially because I, I really <laughs> respect, uh, you know, the office. When I have a state senator, I call a senator. When I, we have a councilman, yeah, that's councilman, fine. councilman Medrano, right okay. now. Okay. Okay. Very good. Let's do that. Then after I can call right. you Sam. Councilman Medrano, let's start with the question. First of all, number one question: Why do you want to run for Arizona State House? Don't you like Bullhead? It's I do like Bullhead City, and that's why I'm running. I am very. I'm just tired of the excuses, Luca. Okay. Every time, uh, as a member of the city council for the last 10 years, over the years, we do go down to meet with our elected officials in Phoenix and with other elected officials, and you have the governor and you have all these people, and things don't get any better. I remember uh, it's almost as though every time you go down there, they put the best face forward, and then they turn around and do something different. In the meantime, if you live outside of Phoenix especially, you just keep getting the shaft it doesn't matter and then and then you hear people well we tried our best well if you tried your best things don't change it's been interesting over the last couple of year a couple of years with senator ward especially some of the changes she's been able to to bring up to the to the forefront and and make some um you know not necessarily changes but she's blocked some uh pretty bad stuff that would have would have hurt us here locally uh of course you've also got uh, the situation like it in in mojave county where you had the entire legislature, uh, what was it, four years ago, vote unanimously, and the governor signed a bill that basically would have cost Mojave County $500,000. How does that happen? How does that happen? It was unanimous, which meant even our own representatives yeah. uh, back, you know, before our current representatives turned around and said, you know, this is, we're going to let them, we're going to let Phoenix target Mojave County to the tune of half a million dollars. How does that happen? So could I say 
you would like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, try to understand, would like to go also to try to reclaim the independence and the autonomy for the local government that we have. Absolutely, because the closest government, the the best government is the closest is the government closest to the people. Period. Uh, you, you know, you live in Golden Valley. I live in Bullhead City. You live in Golden Valley for a reason. I live in Bullhead City for a reason. There are certain things I expect from my city, and things you expect from Mojave County that. For some reason, the state decides that they're going to stick their nose in, and, and it's and it's kind of it's it's weird in so much as the state is constantly talking about how the federal government sticks their nose into their business, but the state turns around and does the exact same thing to the to the local governments. Let me give you an example: the uh, situation with uh, herf revenues and all these fund sweeps. Let's let's get one thing straight. No matter no matter how you look at it, the state is the one that screwed up their own budget several years ago. They didn't heed all the warnings. They didn't do everything that they should have done. They all the the the, the wonderful economy is going to stay wonderful forever, and we're going to go ahead and, and plan as though it's going to continue. Well, it didn't. And instead of balancing their own books on their own backs and figuring out how they were going to do it, they decided they were going to just say, "Hey, hey I know you pay taxes." for road improvements and things of that nature, but we're going to take it because we need it now. We know that you paid this money into the, the State Lake Improvement Fund to improve lakes and river access, but we're going to take that right now. We're going to sweep this, we're going to sweep that. All these things that you paid for, that some of them, you know, even the lottery, you know, when the lottery was approved, it said that we're going to spend it for this, that, and the other, parks and schools and this, that, and the other. They, they knocked all those things out and said, no, we're, we're, we're the kings, we're the ones, the buck starts here. And so, therefore, we're going to take that money. And then when you go down there as a member of a local government like I am for Bullhead City, you go down there and you say, hey, okay, as much as I don't like it, you, you have the power to take it from us. When can we expect it back? Oh, well, when we don't need it anymore is basically the answer. And, and it, just, it, it just never changes. And it's like, it's like they found the golden goose uh, and just won't let it go. I understand completely. I believe I believe the same thing because I believe that that's why the United States originally was uh, founded on local governments. You know, there is a federalism. You know, right. there are states and there are counties and there is a lot of cities and municipalities, and we elect local people to try to represent us the best. You know, and also try to keep our money if we can locally. Well, even you have to admit that when you when you when there's a problem, no matter whether that's at a federal level, a state level, or a local level, one of the first people you tell is somebody on the local level. Yes. There are things that happen uh, that have nothing to do with the city of Bullhead City, but I'll still get phone calls and things of that nature just because they're looking for me to find out how to go about to the next level. And well, that's just the way it is. I understand. Very good. Question is something that is very important, I think, uh, to understand. I already think where you're coming from, and I like that. But let me tell you one thing. For you, what is uh, or what should be the role of government, period? I mean, what should be the role of government? I mean, what is exactly why the government is out there? In your well, the, num the number one reason for government is for public safety, for personal safety. Um, uh, public safety, I meant, not personal. Uh, public safety in as much as like the federal government is responsible for making sure that we were able to defend ourselves. The state government is being, is there to make sure that we, we don't have intrusions from the federal government, in my opinion, okay. uh, as well as just maintain uh, what it takes on a, on a local level. Again, you live in Golden Valley. I live in Bullet City. A couple of great examples. You are 100% okay with the police protection you get from the Mojave County Sheriff's Office. The people in Bullet City have their own police department. And does that does that make is one better than the other? Not necessarily, but we in Bullhead City, in order to be a city, wanted to have our own police department. That was nothing bad against the sheriff's department, but those are the roles of government. On a local level, it's it's what do you want your city to be? What is it that you want your city to to shine? What is it that 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 as a community you want to stand out and be different? I mean, the city of Sedona, for instance, you know, they're very strict and regulated because they they want people to live in their city, but they want it to look like the surroundings. But that's a decision at the local level in Sedona. Me and Bullhead City have no right to go into Sedona. That's ridiculous. That's not the case with for you in Golden Valley. The the county has to deal with things in Golden Valley the same way they do in in the Arizona Strip next to Mesquite and so on and so forth around the around the county. It's a little different. Question, and this is connected, of course, to the role of government. Also, at the end of the day, in your opinion, who owns your body, the government or yourself? <laughs> I own my own body, and you know, I, I don't. I it, it amazes me how much the government feels like they need to baby you. 
Okay. To give you your body, so I guess. We, we agree on that. And I always ask to this, quest, this question to anybody that runs for public office because I think it's pretty much uh, one of the foundation of freedom. If we do on our body, would you, I would say, for me, in my opinion, and many others, the principle of freedom is I have rights until I don't infringe on somebody else's rights. That is exactly how I present it to people. You have your own right until your rights infringe upon my rights. Perfect. So, and I'll try to go to a point now, you will see my point. If I own my body, okay, and uh, I need to be respectful, for example, I mean, more respectful to be safe. Let's say, for example, I know I have a bottle of wine here and I'm drinking in the safety of my own house and home and without breaking any type of uh, you know, driving rules and I'm allowed to drink. So because Correct. technically I'm paying for my alcohol, I'm drinking and uh, there is no danger to others. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said before, also to other candidates, I also to other guests that we had here, I don't smoke marijuana. I don't even like it. And I'm not any type, I've no, I don't have any type of agenda about that because mm -hmm. I'm not, but as a principle of freedom, you may be pretty soon also, if you get elected, mm -hmm. you may be facing to what about it. What do you feel about legislating uh, that the, for the legalization of marijuana, not just for medical purpose, because mm -hmm. medical purpose, we have it, okay? The people somehow get a referendum. I found that if I really own my body, okay, and I'm responsible for it, it means I'm paying for the product and I'm going to be treated like any other substance that could be dangerous, like alcohol, in my opinion, even if I don't smoke, I should be allowed in my own privacy and safety to, to smoke plants or whatever it is, in case marijuana, without being prosecuted, without being raided, without becoming a felon. You know how many felons we have out there, young mm -hmm. people just with a little bit of uh, something there. What is your position on that, legalization well, it, of marijuana? It is interesting. I am very anxious to see how Colorado and Washington State both both proceed with this. I think it's an. I think it's a, uh, a sign of things to come. One of the things that I run into, um, one of my other jobs that I do is I deliver pizzas part time, and I have a good time doing that. But if I told you all the different times that I run across customers that aren't exactly, let's just say they're they're, they're they got the munchies for a reason. Let's just say it that way. Um, I don't have an issue with that. Uh, what I do have an issue is, is where do you stop? At what point do you stop? I mean, you could make the same argument with meth, for instance. You can say that, that it's your own body, so on and so forth. Have you ever been to a, a, meth, a meth lab bust? No, not a bust, but I see document. I saw documentaries, and I yeah. understand the gravity of that. But my point, you know, I understand. You know, you're talking about, first of all, I'm talking right now about a natural substance right. that is a plant. Tomorrow could be sage. You know, you could get... And I'm, and I'm, and I'm yeah. getting to that. My, yes. my point is, is that... Am I ready to say that we should legalize marijuana? I'm probably not ready to say that today. However, <clears throat> what I am saying is it's something that we have to, there's two reasons why we have to look, for, look at it. I can tell you right now that I do believe that the young people in our, in our, in our uh, residencies um, think of it a lot differently than you and I might think about it or, or, or older people that might think about it. But they're going to run the country here someday. <laughs> and I think we need to, need to understand what it is, that, why, if we're going to continue to say that it's bad and it's no and this, that, and the other, we're going to have to provide them with reasons why. And I don't think we're doing a very good job of that. The other thing I don't think we're doing a good job of is, is this, this war on drugs. If, <clears throat> if, if it is as bad as, it, as everybody says it is, then we either got to make it bad or stop. We stop doing this in between thing. Does that make any sense? Because if you, for instance, if you get stopped right now, if you get stopped with a usable amount of uh, marijuana, it's okay. a misdemeanor. If you get you spent with a usable amount of meth, that's a felony. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that marijuana is not as bad as meth, just by the, just by the, the the criminal records that you have of it. All I know though that there are still other people that they got their life ruined. Because uh, even just, I think it's a gram, uh, I don't know exactly, but right. the point you become a fellow, even with marijuana, or even if you're not a fellow, it means the minute that's oh, going yeah. to cost you a lot of money. And, you know, as I said, uh, why think about alcohol, how many people die, uh, or because of a DUI, or, or even just because about health reason, you know? So mm -hmm. still, it's responsibility, and I think everybody should be responsible for their own actions. All I think that if the government today has the power to decide that alcohol is good, 80 years ago wasn't good. You were a felon there too. Right. And now we have the plant at 
clinically it's also been proven that he has uh, not co- the same I mean nobody really died of marijuana that okay? is correct so and as I said I'm just trying to say to the principle that we were talking about if we believe in freedom self-responsibility and I own my body in my point of view I think that if I do in the respect of others I should not be criminalized for having or smoking anything you know that in that in that in that small confine of in your own home by yourself yeah. yes How do you enforce that, though? And when I say enforce that, I go back to the meth example. How do you, because I have seen meth lab busts, Mm -hmm. and and when you have to call out the hazmat team to take care of a a meth bust, then it's no longer, it's no longer, you're only in in, uh, uh, causing problems for yourself. You're creating, you're creating a danger for the rest of your community. So, and and with marijuana, that is not the case. I understand. That's why I like to stick to that one because there are so many other things we can, but anyway, that's, you know, just as I said, this is a conversation to know you better. And, you know, we don't need even to agree. You know, we just but try I think, to. But I do think that what Colorado and Washington is do is very uh, unique and something that we should watch. And if it, if it, if it can work in, in Colorado and, and in Washington, then I do think it's something okay. we need to look at. But as far as your own personal body, I mean, let's put it, let's put it to you another way. Like I said, I, I deliver a lot of pizzas. Mm-hmm. I could call the police for every single person I run into that, that is obviously using inside their house when I deliver, but I don't because it's not that big of a deal to me. I understand. I understand. Very good. Thank you. Now, um, another thing that you may be probably um, going to vote, you know, in the, the next future, what do you think about private prisons? I mean, what is, uh, do you believe that um, the role of government is to delegate uh, is such an important uh, uh, you know, function, you know, I'm talking about incarcerating people. I don't know if you heard about, uh, for example, in some states, uh, this private prison, they are suing the government, mm-hmm. the state government, because they don't have enough customers. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the, if you are, uh, you are a business owner, you know that the business at the end of the day is to make some profit. Otherwise, <laughs> you cannot pay bills, you cannot mm-hmm. live. If you delegate such important role, and I believe very much that the government should be staying out as much as I can in many things, mm-hmm. but few things should be responsible in my opinion one is safety and one of course is the judicial system i okay? agree with you 100 percent. you what? can you can you can relate this and and i know you were going to talk about it a little bit later you can relate this to my opposition to red light cameras or to photo radar in any way mm-hmm. shape or form um anytime you make it so that because a, a, a private business is in business like you said to make money if there's an opportunity for them to not make money what is being done behind the scenes to actually make money? Lobbies. I can't, I can't justify that as being okay. That was my big problem with red lights and with the red light cameras in Bullhead City, which you notice they're still not up and won't be up in Bullhead City, because the idea behind the red light cameras, oh, they they, they make things safer and people and they get the ticket and so on and so forth, but the company is basically telling you. We want to re- we want to reduce the number of accidents because of red light runners. We want you to put us out of business. Well, no business goes into business to be put out of business, mm-hmm. and therefore it's only a matter of time before they find something else new to keep business going. You brought up a good point with the private prisons. Uh, you know, at what length will these prison companies go to make sure they still have customers? It's business, so it, 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 you just can't. And that's Trust what, that. That's what I was going to ask you because, you know, I live, uh, as you know, in the county. I don't even have a red light where I live. Yeah. And every time I come through a bullhead, <clears throat> I see there are a lot of red lights, of course. And I, and I, you know, I'm trying to learn what's going on in bullhead. And I know that there was a big, um, you know, I don't know, showdown is the right word. But anyway, controversy uh, about these red flex cameras. Mm-hmm. Exactly what happened in bullhead. In, in bullhead city, a majority of the council voted to enter into agreement with Red Flex. This was several years ago. They all kind of run together. I can't give you the exact okay. year. Um, they they voted to install the cameras. We needed to get the permission to do that because all the red light installations were going to go on Highway 95. That is a state highway. Mm-hmm. The Arizona Department of Transportation was supposed to give us a, a, a contract to do that. We entered into an agreement with Red Flex. We were in turn supposed to enter into an agreement with the Department of Transportation. We had several changes in, not several changes, but we had changes in leadership between our city manager and our city attorney. And they went and re-reviewed these issues because it took ADOS so long to get a contract back to us. And the city attorney and the city manager went back and re-evaluated what it was that Red Flex was supposed to do. Then they contacted Red Flex, and Red Flex, as I had warned when I was outvoted mm-hmm. earlier, 
Um, I voted against the contract with Red Flex. I had warned, one of the things that I had warned was that they're not going to be satisfied with just red light cameras. I turned out to be right. Red Flex called us back and said, you know, we don't really want to put the just red light cameras in unless you're going to let us do photo radar as well. Mm. And the council pretty much said no. Okay, that and that just kind of, and we just kind uh, of ignored it from I there. would like to shake your hand because I really can stand <laughs> Red Flex. And I tell you why, because, you know, first of all, one thing from a, I'm not a policeman, but I've been talking with different uh, people that they are professional in the mm -hmm. areas. If somebody, let's say, is a drunk person, okay, mm -hmm. or he's not going to really stop anything. I mean, somebody's still going to go through the red lights. Right. He's not competent to understand what's going on, number one. Number two, and that's pretty much, honestly, if, if, if it's supposed to stop the crime, that's not going to stop the crime. It must be a real officer, there, a real deputy there trying to stop the bad person doing something mm -hmm. bad. So it doesn't fix the problem. Number two, now, we're living in New America, as you know. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are pretty much almost like, and it's not a, a drama, it's true, 1984, it's here. Uh, Department of Homeland Security, NSA, they have access to pretty much every type of thing can be on network, okay? Mm -hmm. They can spy on your computer. Right. Imagine what they can do with uh, some sort of a private company that we don't <laughs> even know where it's from. Wherever. Right. So it's, uh, it's proven, it's not my opinion, that uh, they have not just uh, access to the single photo shot mm -hmm. of the, the person that is breaking the law. You know, they can have 24-7 access, like a live feed, to track with the Absolutely, they can. Uh, recognition of your camera, I mean, right. of, of your license plate, they can pretty much see wherever you are every time of the day. You agree with that? Absolutely. And, I, and like I said, at what point, if they, let, let's just say, let's take it to the extreme. They put red light cameras in, in Bullet City or anywhere else, and they've solved the problem. Nobody, nobody runs a red light ever mm -hmm. again. Well, they're not going to make money if people don't run exactly, red lights. Exactly. So you, you, you've got to come up with something else. Yeah. And, and I, you don't give police services, you don't contract police services, no matter how simple. You might think a red light ticket really isn't that bad in terms of giving away a police service, but it is. You it don't is. You don't give away police services. You don't contract out I for agree. police services. Period. I mean, I, I would be still not happy, but I'd rather to have at least uh, the local government to be in control of that. At least Absolutely. I know it would stop there. It wouldn't go some private company. I don't even know where they're from, you know? Thank you very much again for that. And as I said, you know, when I say thank you, I really mean it, listeners, because I don't know much about Mr. Medrano, but I'm just going through the facts we got here. And when I have something I don't agree, you know, I'm always never shy. You know that. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Now, simple questions. And by the way, listeners, uh, if you want, we have time today. I'm not going to do anything else but Mr. Medrano, so, uh, Councilman Medrano. So call in if you have any questions. Just be short, question, and uh, so you can answer quickly as, as many as we can. Now, what do you think about uh, something that, unfortunately, legislation cannot vote, it couldn't vote, but still you can have an opinion, at least uh, your personal opinion, about Common Core. Are you familiar about that? Yes, I am. Go ahead. What do you think about it? Well, I think it's, we talk about the need to keep uh, education at a local level, yet we keep embracing these things that come down from the federal government. One of the things in my position as a, as a reporter at the TV station that we run across is we go to different uh, school board meetings. And yet we hear the same thing at every school board meeting. So is it really a matter of local control or is it just a matter of being told what you're going to be doing from the federal government? It's just another unnecessary door from the federal government to control control through the through the fiat of money. Money is a great motivator for, for any government, especially local schools that forever say that they need more money. So it's just... I, I, don't get me wrong, I think some of the more rigor, some of the stronger uh, responsibilities that we need to have our t children learn, I think those are all good parts. But the fact that it comes from the federal government, the fact that it's being basically administered through the federal government, the, the, um, the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, where they can get the information mm -hmm. from, the, from, from, data the, from mining, the kids. Data mining. Th data mining, thank yes. you, that's it. Those sort of things just, it's just, it, it, there's more... There's more bad than good. Okay, interesting. Very, very good. Thank you. Now, uh, I would like to have a, a little quick break. We have some music. And, of course, we're going to play normally my music. That's pretty much the part of the deal. <laughs> and uh, guess what, guys? Just to let you know, if you want to also listen to more of my songs, you can go to lovegunsfreedom.com and uh, download any of my songs for just 99 cents. Right? Why I'm saying that? Because I believe in free market. Here at ktalks.com, we don't 
steal your money like the government does, but we ask for, okay? So right now we have State of Mind, Lyrics and Music by Gianluca Zane. It's a state of mind. State of mind. Something different today, okay? Okay, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Time is running by and uh, we got to really... First of all, I would like to remind everybody that uh, if you want to call, we have accepting calls today. But if you don't have calls, you can also contact directly Council Member Medrano because uh, he's available and now he's running also for state. So even if you don't live in Bullhead, mm-hmm. how can they reach you? They can they can call me directly on my cell phone. I don't wow. I don't mind that. It's uh, 702-420-9360. Um, I do have a website, sort of, kind of, uh, com. That really is just a link to my Facebook page that I set up for my campaign. But... Uh, you can leave comments there. I do answer questions. Um, so Okay, excellent. Very good. Now, let's talk about something else. You know, we are going through different type of topics that all things that could be related to your new position mm-hmm. as Arizona State House Representative. Uh, what do you think about, first of all, how do you interpret, as your personal opinion, the Second Amendment. What is exactly does the Second Amendment? <laughs> the Second, the right to bear arms and not to pass any laws to infringe on that right. Um, I, I mean, I think it means exactly what it says. I think not only do I think that you have a right to bear arms. I think nowadays, with the way things are going, I think I don't personally own a gun, and that probably has more to do with I don't think to purchase a gun when I have the money to do it, <laughs> not because I don't think I should have one or anything like that. But quite frankly, I think everybody should have a gun. And here's my theory on that. If everybody had a gun, don't you think the criminal on the street might uh, think twice before they rob that little old lady because she might be packing heat? I mean, think about some of the things that have been going on here lately. We had a, you had an armed robbery in Mojave Valley. I mean, if the guy went in there knowing that the person behind the counter has a gun, he'd probably think twice about going in there. 
So I mean, I, I, in a in a in a very open uh, position, uh, the more guns people have, the better better off we are. Period. Okay. This is a, from a point of you know public safety and of course a society that they also say you know. Uh, this is proven by FBI statistics that uh, late the last 20 years with more con uh, guns available to the public, law-abiding citizens, of course, uh, we have a reduction on cr in crime. And they, mm -hmm. it shows also the statistics, statistics in different cities. For example, Chicago, Chicago. Mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, all the gun control doesn't work that well. That's, you know? They tried that and that's, yeah. and that's, I mean, think of, I mean, it's, we just had the anniversary of the Sandy Hook mm -hmm. situation and then that was very tragic and it was probably the single most tragic thing that I can think of in recent history, but the one thing I do think about about that particular event, the principal, who was the first person that was killed in that regard, mm -hmm. who actually in, in, uh, confronted the young man that had the weapons, what if she had a gun? Mm -hmm. If she'd had a gun, this would have been over a lot sooner. I agree. Uh, so, just to spell it out, in case you get elected our state representative, would you ever consider to vote any legislation that would restrict uh, the, you know, capacity of magazines or any type of uh, things that now we don't have? You know, for example. Absolutely not. I, if I pass any legislation in regard to to guns, it would be inviting those people that got pushed out of Colorado to open up shop in Arizona. All right, that would be great. <laughs> uh, and you know, another thing, you know, because uh, this is the way I interpret. I mean. Of course, uh, the Second Amendment is also an opportunity, a right to defend yourself, uh, your persona. But what do you think also about the intent, the original intent that the founding fathers had to defend freedom? Because uh, we may have a domestic or even foreign invasion. I mean, what do you think about that? You know, I think it's interesting. If I, if I recall my history cor correctly, one of the things that the Japanese were... Um, considering when they when they bombed Pearl Harbor was also a possible invasion of the coast in California. But one of the things that stopped them from doing that was the idea that Americans have arms and they didn't want to uh, take that chance. And I think that's a, it, I think even if it's just a great deterrent, mm -hmm. it's a great reason to 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 honor that um, okay. uh, constitutional right. Question. If today let's say dream for a moment, okay? Okay. You, you got elected you get in mm -hmm. your little pack, you're going driving down to Phoenix. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, okay. you open shop, you're in your office, and you're ready to for your first uh, floor, okay? Okay. What would be the first bill you would like to pass? The first bill or I sponsor. would like to pass. Oh, wow. Or sponsor. Or sponsor. Um, you want to take a little bit? Let's see. If I let's, yeah. One second only. Okay. Okay, caller, one second. Caller, are you there? Caller? Guns and marijuana. Okay, who's calling there, first of all? Problem. We got a problem here. Okay. In this state, we got medical marijuana and pretty soon we're going to okay, have uh, legal hey, marijuana. Hey, can you hear me there, caller? Identify yes. yourself, first of all. Good afternoon. What's your name? Yeah, this is Al. Okay, Al. Where are you Al. from, Al? Golden Valley. All right, go ahead. Make your question. Thank you. Okay, my, my point is this. Talking about guns, I want to bring in an issue. Marijuana... Jack Daniels and pain pills, okay? We've got a problem where they're sending out letters to medical marijuana patients that say you can't have any guns anymore if you're a medical marijuana patient. Okay. But that does not apply to people who drink Jack Daniels, take pain pills, etc. I'll take my uh, answer offline. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Did you get it? Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? I think it's well, a good I question. Th I think it is a good question, and I think um, if, if they're getting letters saying that they can't have guns because they have a medical marijuana card, I think that's wrong. <laughs> okay. Just because you have, are using a substance that is legally to, legal to use under mm -hmm. the circumstances of which they've obtained it, I don't see how that uh, voids your right. constitutional right of anything. Okay. Interesting. Very good. Very good. So, what do you think about Did you have any time to think about the first... Bill you would like to sponsor? The first bill I would like to sponsor would be probably along the lines of, of I, you know, I can't even, I should probably think about that more often. There's so many of them going okay, through my mind okay. right now. I mean, there's everything from, let's, 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 I don't know. I, I can't. I'm glad. It was a good question there. <laughs> so you're going to think. when I'm going to think, and I'll get back to you on that one. Perfect. <laughs> because, hey, you start to visualize, you know, uh -huh. first to visualize here and you're going to make it happen, you know. There's so many different things. Okay, let's talk about what is your biggest accomplishment if tomorrow, you know, you want to read your bio and Councilman Medrano, 
That's the best thing I did when I served the city. Give me one. Okay. Well, one of the things I think uh, was thinking was is our ability to think outside the box and get things accomplished. Um, as you know, in Bullhead City, we're facing you know right now we're facing thirty seven million dollars in needed infrastructure needs just with our streets. But that hasn't stopped our ability to 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 take care of business when we need to in an, in an out of the box way of thinking. Let me give you an example. Um, one of the roads in Bullhead City that has needed the, the most work for the longest period of time has been Raymar Road east of Highway 95. That has been something that has been on my mind probably since I first took office in 2003. Um, when we built the parkway and when we, uh, uh, at first when we had the parkway opened, we didn't have very many access, east-west corridors to access the parkway. Raymar Road and Gold Rush Road turned into a de facto east-west corridor. But Raymar Road was in such terrible shape. Gold Rush Road was in terrible shape. But people were still using this. Now, without using any funding from our, uh, our precious HERF revenue funds, which we get from the state when they decided they're going to give it to us, um, and without using our sales tax revenues that we also have to use for everything else in the city, uh, we had an agreement with a contracting firm that, from another issue involving North Oatman Road, we went into an agreement with them to actually repave Raymar Road as a settlement. Okay. And so they repaved Raymar Road. Um, it didn't come, nothing came out of the city's general fund as a result of that. Gold Rush Road was paid for through a CDBG grant, our wastewater uh, treatment funds. Okay. Uh, excuse me, not our wastewater treatment funds, our flood control funds uh, that people pay to, to, to do that. And we have created new roads. So that is that is one thing. Also, the uh, push to keep money local by shopping local okay. was something that Question. is very important. Do you consider yourself a fiscal conservative? Absolutely. So I would like to say, you know, as uh, you know, we like to always ask questions before you, you get elected. And when you get elected, hopefully you keep uh, fulfill mm -hmm. your commitment, you know. Would you ever raise any taxes in, okay. in, uh, in, uh, in the state? When you are in the state, if you are in the state of Arizona House, would you pass legislation to raise taxes? Absolutely not. Not on the state level. I think taxes, for the most part, are something that um, needs to be uh, dealt with on a local level. If you have a local problem, that is something that you put on the ballot and try to address it locally. Okay. Not there, I can't think of anything in the state level that would require you to do that. Okay. Very good. Very good. And uh, listen, I have now, you know, try to touch so many different things. You know, I really appreciate that we try to be flexible here. And... Uh, I have another question for you, you know, mm -hmm. about what is your biggest regret? If like, you know, we all make mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's perfect. Your life, public life as uh, elected officials in the city, mm -hmm. uh, what is your biggest mistake you made, if you made one? Let's see. Something you would change. You know, I say, I'm sorry, I wasn't like that, but I was wrong, you know, something. Yeah, when we, when we went out and um, as, as a city decided we were going to build a new city hall, um, we did so at a time when revenues were, were uh, going strong and so on and so forth. But at the same time, we also bonded for our um, some of our street improvements. Um, looking back at it now, we, we, in my opinion, we didn't need the, uh, the new city hall as bad as we thought we did compared to some of the other needs that we have uh, in Bullhead City. So I would say that that's probably the single biggest regret. I did go along with that. Mm -hmm. I also... I also learned that uh, uh, I was relatively new on council when that first came up. When uh, was that? Which year was it? Uh, 2003, 2004. Okay. Uh, relatively new. Um, and some of the things that um, um, our, uh, one of our former city managers did, uh, let's put it to you this way. It's very interesting when, 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 a, when a bureaucrat wants something, mm -hmm. how they present it to the elected officials the first time is very important. Yes. Um, because in this particular case, this particular bureaucrat brought it to our attention in such a fashion, knowing full well that we would say no. He presented to us a city hall that was a Taj Mahal, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I was on the committee to, to, to look at that first. Okay. And, uh, and of course we were going to say no that was just way too much i mean he wanted a museum he wanted you know this glass i mean it was just it was just a really expensive ta expensive taj mahal but by doing that what he did is he said this is this is what i'm asking for but what i really want is this even though we may really only need this mm -hmm. i understand Lister, we are pretty much now almost at the end of the show and i would like to give you the floor for the last message this is something that uh, you know you try to present yourself to potential voters mm -hmm. 
And uh, final message to our listeners. Go ahead. Well, I am running for State House of Representatives because I'm tired of the excuses. We need to bring local government uh, to local government. We need to stop state government from being um, an overreaching uh, part of government. It needs to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. The things I see coming out of uh, uh, Phoenix have a lot to do with impending on local freedoms and local rights. Um, if you have a problem with something in your local community, you should be able to deal with it on a local level, not something that should be done on the state level. I think that um, when it comes, like you mentioned, taxes, I think that's that's a, that's a local issue that needs to be dealt with. I know you had, you know, you, we had the education tax. We need to find we need to find solutions to problems. What is it that's costing so much in education that we have to keep that we we have to constantly hear our educators say we need more money, we need more money, we need more money. When it, w at what point does that stop? If we give them more money, does that mean that they're going to stop asking for more money? We need to find those answers out. We need to know what it is that's costing all that money. And I don't think we're getting that right now. It's just we're getting a lot of excuses. We're getting what we're getting is well, it's being told to us from the federal government, so we're passing it on to you. Or we're being told, well, uh, you know, what will well, the state needs to be fixed first? I just don't subscribe to that. Okay, very good. At least I wish you the best, seriously. And I would like to remember everybody, every listener that you've been listening to, love guns and freedom. On K Talks 13:40 a.m. My name is Luca Zanna, and if you like to support my efforts, go to my website uh, zanna.us. You can download any of my songs for 99 cents only. And you know, the bottom line is this one: we are here because we try to make our part. At the same time, you know, we ask for support, and also you can support K Talks. I think it's a great opportunity, regardless that you believe or agree or not uh, with, um, with any of us. You know, we have a different minds different beliefs but what is beautiful about this radio that we have freedom of speech so i'm grateful to be here to have the opportunity to share my forum with listeners and also I invite your comments please send emails if you want to have some topics or some special guests you can go to my website lovegunsfreedom.com you can email me and i will hopefully try to answer to everybody normally that's what i do okay and that until next sunday i would let you enjoy your love guns and freedom now we have three more minutes and uh, I'm pretty much almost done. I would like to say one thing. A prayer. I don't know if you believe or not. But that we're going to be Americans united, regardless of different opinion, to regain in our republic. That's right. Hey, thank you very much, Sam. No problem. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.